Hello and welcome to Bad Boy Cinema. I am your host, Rick Real, and once again, I have my perfectly adequate co-host, Elliot Film, in the studio with me. Elliot, how are you? I'm perfectly adequate. <laughs> as, as previously, well, I feel like I, I feel like I was being too nice uh, in the in the previous intros, where I'm like, oh yeah, you're, you're too great. nice. Okay, yeah. So I'm I like, thought you yeah, meant you know. too nice to you beforehand. You're like that was hyping myself up a little. bit. But to no, me, no, to, yeah, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So That's it. I just, I just wanted to keep it. I wanted to keep it even handed, mm -hmm. which is a new That's, concept for me. Yeah, you're learning. Yeah, I'm, le I'm learning that skill. I'm, I'm a little shy about it. <laughs> uh, and that's fine. Uh, it's it, good it, it, to have skills, and maybe one day um, we'll someone who share teaches some. skills. Maybe a website who teaches skills will uh, share some money with us. <laughs> I'll say Who's that. To say? Maybe. maybe. Oh, and I'll, I'm just going to do something new. Ooh. Mm. A little diet soda pop. Of, Got a little bottle. Not, um, not going to say the name because no. they're not paying us, but um, it's a classic. Oh, yeah. wait. Nice. Um, Great. This week's episode of bad boy cinema we have um Oppie. oppenheimer uh, the, the, the oppenheimer uh, Oppie, released baby. in 2023 um as described by wikipedia as an epic biological drama film that's not which what that is a mouthful all. and <laughs> epic biographical drama film did i say biblical no you said biological which is uh, are you okay Dude, yeah, maybe this, I can't read. This classic soda that you were having might be uh, one of the oldest sodas. Let's. Say. <laughs> I wish. Oh man, what a, what a treat that would be for for myself as well as the audience. But okay, uh, Oppenheimer released in 2023, um, directed by once once again our friend um, Christopher N, um, starring Killy Murphy, Emily Blunt, Matt Damon, um, mm -hmm. Josh from Drake and Josh. Josh um, from Josh Hartnett, the guy, the guy, uh, Iron Man is from this. Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Um, the guy who who was Han Solo in the Solo movie. Though I don't think he's actually not that he's uncredited, but he's not like he's a he's a big character in the movie, and they don't like say that's who he is, and I don't think he has like a name. Yeah, they don't say Han Solo. Senate Star Wars. Or, they just yeah, like, they don't. They're like, if, screw that guy. Well, he, Josh Peck's here, but you know, who's Han Solo? Um, yeah, sure. Josh anyway, Peck, yeah. this was my second time watching the film, um, and I believe this yeah. was your first. You did not catch that's, it in the theater. I, I intentionally did not catch it in the theater. Um, You're like, I'm sorry. I'm pledging my allegiance to Barbie. Um, I, I did pledge my allegiance to Barbie, <laughs> and I stand by it. Having now seen both films. Um, I made the right choice. I, uh, you know, and I disagree. Look, I was, I, disagree. I was shamed a lot. I was shamed a lot at the time. Like you have to see this film in 70 millimeter IMAX. It's hyper important that you really understand the, the scope of this cinematic experience. And then I watched it and I'm like, it's just a bunch of white dudes being like, Oh, I'm a tortured soul. You don't get it. <laughs> You don't get it's, it's just I know you love this poor little meow meow <laughs> all over the place. But for me, I was like, this is just they're just sad at their own being. They're just sad for their own I mean really the only mistake. person who was sad was oh, our, our our friend Oppie. I mean like about about their own things that they did, being like a, specifically the poor little meow meow character archetype. Uh, yeah, which I'm going to explain in detail. You just have to know what that means. I'm sorry. Um, but <laughs> it's, a, it's a comment. Go to film school. You'll get it. You'll get it. You know, I mean, they're talking. We about can't explain everything to you guys. Right. We're the experts. We have the podcast. You just you have to kind of take our word for things. 
because uh, that's what being an expert is. We just say things unilaterally and you believe it because we we have we're on the mic. You know, we're on the air. And you're I paid forty five dollars so. for this microphone. So what have you done lately? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You know, well, you're not you're not explaining what a poor little meow meow is, and I'm not either. You know, you can look that up. Go to film school. But Oppie's really the only poor little meow meow in the movie because everyone else. Iron know. Man's a bit of a poor little meow meow. No, he's he's a big baby. <laughs> he's absolutely a big baby. He's a big baby. Uh, he got brushed off by Albert Einstein. <laughs> Like that it, destroyed it. Yeah, no, it's like it's the equivalent of like walking past somebody in the hallway, giving them a head nod, and they don't do that back. And then you think about it for like five years. Yeah. Or however long it, the, the time difference was. But he thinks about it forever and it ruins his life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, you know, can't say that I found that relatable, but, uh, you know that's that's certainly a type of guy it's, um, but he's not a poor little man and what's really funny is having watched the beginning like watched the movie having you know seen it before and knowing like because i'm not necessarily i wasn't as we have discussed before cryogenesis mm -hmm. during the events of the of the of this movie um we were we were we were on ice so we we didn't no, the historical figures, maybe. Um, now, could we've read about it, sure, but we didn't live through it. And so I didn't know who this Lewis Strauss character Strauss. was. I, Strauss. Strauss. No, it's Strauss. But why is it it's spelled Strauss. Strauss? Why is it spelled Strauss? Because he thinks that he's cool for being Strauss. Strauss. Mm. He thinks that it gives him Southern charm. I don't think there's anything Southern about that guy. <laughs> no, but uh, it's like, um, I don't know. It's like uh, being like a championship bodybuilder and you're just like out of fucking book tattoo just to be a well-rounded individual, you know, like doesn't mean anything. He's just doing it. it. Yeah. Does that make sense? Is that <laughs> no, not at all. I'm not, I'm not following. Um, but anyway, it's the so, slightest nod to a, a kind of guy that's the opposite of what you are, and then you tell people you're well rounded. I feel like I do that. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you but I am well. I, uh, anyway, I'm not. He's not literally me. I'm literally up and up. Clearly, clearly, if you've watched the movie, I, he's he's. I'm more of a of a of a tortured soul. Than just like a big petty crybaby who's hung up on something from like four or five years ago and, and hasn't gotten over it. Uh, but anyway, the beginning of the movie, you know, uh, straw straws is explaining mm -hmm. <laughs> that you know he said hey to Albert Einstein and Albert Einstein didn't give him the time of day. And he goes to Oppenheimer and he's like, oh, "What was that about? Uh, like, what'd you tell him?" And, and I was like, ah, he'll be fine. And the context of that is they had like an incredibly depressing conversation about how the world is like forever changed and is going to be like, you know, under the of the heel of like nuclear, you know, deterrence essentially forever, right? Yeah. Uh, but then he's just like, yeah, he'll he'll get over it. He's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Give him a day. Yeah. Which, like, realistically. Why didn't you just give him a day and say what up to him tomorrow, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, or like, I guess maybe he doesn't run into Albert Einstein that much. I, he never. Didn't they all hang him. out in the same place. I didn't really understand that they were on this like little campus for science guys. Yeah, <laughs> they, were, they were at, uh, instead of space camp, it was blow up camp. It was, it was old man was science bomb camp. camp. Yeah. No, that bomb camp was in the middle of the movie, which in my opinion, the middle where they're just like making the bomb is kind of it's it's kind of boring <laughs> like the, mid, the, the middle middle hour half. is the the middle well it's the middle like hour um yeah. it's not particularly compelling because the build up before they go to uh los alamos cool you know the aftermath of everything cool the part where they're like 
can we make the bomb? It's like, yeah, you can. Like, we, we know you did it. The movie also wouldn't make any sense if you couldn't do it. Like, you made the bomb. Like, you know. Yeah. We I don't, don't have to belabor that. Hydrogen. Point. You're like, I don't fucking no, know. No, I don't think You're that's what I don't know. You're the scientist. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure they were atomic bombs when we dropped them. Um, even though I wasn't, I wasn't there for it, but you know. Yeah. Uh, it's just like uh, I got annoyed. Every single character is like annoying. R- really, they're their own. Yeah, they're their own annoying guy, in my opinion. Well, I know why I you find say, annoying about Oppenheimer. <laughs> I will. It's because he's a communist, and he won't admit. <laughs> it. He won't admit anything. He 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 basically is like, I, I'm not going to give you any opinion about anything. Am I a communist? No at Who's all. to say? He's like, who is it going to get me laid? Then mm-hmm. sure, if uh, it'll get my security yeah. clearance revoked, I did. Then no, I mean, it's it's that easy. I'll I say did whatever. Think that it was funny that um, he's like this. He's the most powerful mind on earth at the time, and his one and he's weakness like a is boy. BPD pussy. <laughs> It's like, yeah, like me. <laughs> I get it's it. Same, yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, I was annoyed with. <laughs> well, I later in the film where they're sad like... at his own. He's like, "What if we did this? Wouldn't that be like? Look, I'm gonna amass every genius on earth. I'm gonna convince them to do this, and then they do it. And he's like, guys, why do we do it?'" Like you can yeah. make a bomb, but you can't set it off. It's like, well, I mean, what, what else are you gonna do with it? Just sit on it, like yeah, you, that's what it's for. I mean, I kind of get it because it's like I think the point of building the bomb is saying, hey, we have this, so no one can fight wars anymore. And people were like, well, what if we just build our own? And then, then what? And then it's like, oh, and then that's when the whole that's when a lot of Metal Gear Solid themes come into play, which I'm not gonna mm-hmm. get into, but sure, you know, fans of the show will know. About you know, MGS five you know nuclear deterrence. Here you're you're trying to disarm you know all the nukes for the special cutscene. Uh, anyway, yeah, it, to me it read as very um, oh no the consequences of my own actions. Uh, but I will say, now I did not like this movie. Did not like a yeah. single character. I will say absolutely. Shout out the sound design team. Uh, you kind of killed it. It's so, it, yeah. I mean, I mean, the sound design the, was kind of sick. The music was good. Yeah, Ludwig. Uh, Ludwig goes yeah. crazy. L- Ludwig was he was really firing on on all cylinders. Um, I've been a, I've like been a the, big Ludwig fan since like 2010. I would say. Yeah, I like no the muscles. stomping sounds, like the mm-hmm. you know when when something's happening and where he's like getting a little like anxiety, like panic attacky. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're like, whoa, um, it's like a celebratory thing, but then there's like sad violin music, and it's like, dude. It's a, <laughs> we never said out. we've never said that and Chris then, Nolan. And then the a, bomb goes off filmmaker. and it's silent and he's just breathing. And you're like, whoa, dude. Sound design. It is cool. Like it is pretty sick. I, I'm like, I'm saying it in a sarcastic voice, but I was kind of like, this is cool. <laughs> no, and like you missed out experiencing that in the theater because I think that's aspect of the movie like is a is is pretty cool i have uh, a very um nice sound system i'll say but like the the, the, the scale of the of the bomb stuff was yeah. was cool on it i mean we've all seen screen. nuclear bombs i think all we, we've not all seen nuclear bombs what are you talking about <laughs> we've we've no we've seen video i mean which is what also what the movie is right yeah but it's, you know, and seeing it in theaters was cool. That's all I'm gonna say. It was a, it was I, a cool I mean, spectacle. Sure. I believe that. I would not pay thirty seven dollars for that experience, but you know, I mean, I didn't I'm sure it was fine. I paid like thirteen, but you know. Okay, we live in different. Yeah. Economies. Okay, you live you live in a in a dump, and I live in in the in the good place where. Uh, yeah, you know, I live money, in money is um, free. I live in a place where we import digital products and then upcharge them because they're imported good so maybe maybe that's film. how it should be that shouldn't be that way but you know whatever i'm not i'm not a communist like hoppy over here i don't look 
I don't really know what the message of the film was. Like I do, but <laughs> no, like it's it, again, it's pretty me. obvious. I think that <laughs> like I get Chris Ann is like not a fan of the bomb. Yeah, I think I think um, he thinks it's bad. Yeah, I mean that's fair to say. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what he's trying to say about communism. I don't think he's saying anything about it. I think he's that's just, just like, reference. Communism part of- existed at the time. I think communism is strictly a plot point. I don't think he has. I mean, he didn't. He did. He didn't like come at it like it's bad. Like he's he's pretty sympathetic. I mean, the way that you know the movie yeah, portrays like, Oppenheimer and the other communists, it seems sympathetic to what they're doing. So I don't think you know famous conservative filmmaker Chris N. I'm and I'm saying that sarcastically uh, had you know any i don't think at, at worst he has zero thoughts about communism at all they're just i don't think he has any plot. thoughts about politics at all i agree he's he's i mean it's funny to make a movie like Oppenheimer be like he's famously apolitical uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah but well, like truly i don't think that he i think he is um privileged enough that he has never had to think about it at all yeah. You're like, what if, um, what if like we weren't racist to people? It's like, all right, sounds fine. <laughs> do I have to do anything? That's the kind of guy Chris. He's Andrews like, cool. I'm head. already not. He's like, I'm already not racist to people, so I'm just gonna keep doing my thing, and y'all can figure it out. Yeah. Um, which is not really what you want. Uh, no, no. Whatever. But but he's an artist. Uh, I also like. I mean, I don't know if this is true to like the real Oppenheimer or not, but I like that. You know they're like what should we do with uh, los almos like after after you know they they did the the bomb right and you know they're going to work on the hydrogen bomb or whatever uh when he's talking to truman which i like that scene in general but and oppenheimer's like we'll give it back to the indians they're like what are you crazy no we're not going to do that like we might make war bombs yeah we might make it an even bigger place but we're not we're not giving it back to the indians absolutely not no <laughs> Yeah, that's true to life, I'm sure. No, I mean, uh, yeah, for sure. But it's funny that they just like they let him be like, uh, yeah, he's he's kind of woke, you know, like yeah. this sort of after the fact, like he did try and woke him from up. them. He did try and woke him up a bit. Yeah, so I don't believe uh, that the guy who invented the nuclear bomb really cared about anybody. And I know that's the point of the movie is that actually he did care and he made a, a big old oopsie. Yeah, he uh, he. Went, <laughs> He well, made like a know, five year long oopsie or whatever, but uh, sometimes you just get really focused on something and, and, you, and you just end up doing it. And you're like, oh, I maybe ought not to have done that afterward, you know, kind of that moment of clarity. And in, in the whole time, he's also just dealing with, with the, the communist BPD, you know, yeah, let's see. And that, that's that, that'll really do a number on you. So I'm saying, yeah, imagine I mean, if he didn't have 80% of his brain focused on BBD pussy. How good would the bomb be? <laughs> He just wouldn't have made the bomb. He would have been like, oh, I don't need to do this. <laughs> Maybe this was ill-advised. <laughs> yeah, I think that is really. So it's Flor- it's Florence Pugh's fault, uh, the whole yeah, thing. Sure. I think that That's is kind of, I mean, she this. is a, 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 that, that character is pivotal to, to Oppenheimer's story. And I think that's what Christopher Nolan was actually trying to say. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that her, you know, demise, you know, kind of partially fueled, you know, his, his, drive to to finish the bomb but uh, who's to say dude so you thought every character was annoying yeah pretty much i I didn't um i didn't enjoy anything i will um (laughs) you didn't like huey from the boys playing his bongos at every opportunity no (laughs) (laughs) i I thought that was a very weird this like they're like oh they they're like oh hey it's it's Huey from the boys. And then like when they first introduced the character, they're like recruiting him into the into the project. And then every other scene, it's just him playing his bongos, like having a good time. I'm like, what, what was it? <laughs> in, the, in the book, if I read the Oppenheimer book, which I'm not going to, but if I did, am I gonna is there gonna be a recurring character who's just like going to town on the bongos? I I doubt it. So like what did That's did Huey true. from the boys go, hey, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, is, that's, that's yeah, his name, just right? having fun. Sure. 
Um, I will yeah, to so. to be a little cinematic here to flex my um, dropped out of film school cred. Uh, what's with the black and white? What are you What are you doing? Oh, uh, so well, that was explained. Like I so. get it. I looked. I mean, it do up. you? You looked it up. You looked at what uh, Chris N said, where the uh, the color is like from Oppenheimer's perspective of things, and then black and white yeah. is like the more objective perspective. Um, I just I kind of viewed it more as like was, just the. You go ahead. It seems it would have been easier just be like oh the black and whites from Straw's perspective. That's what I saw when I looked it up. Yeah, I mean, and that's I think that's how it plays out. Chris N specifically said that it was like a subjective versus objective thing, and I don't know if I necessarily like. I know he's the guy who made the movie, and so yeah, like if anyone's he, word he is true, wrong. like I I don't think <laughs> like in practice watching the movie, it doesn't really. Yeah, what I, I think saw, I think if you saw the screenplay, and then because apparently the screenplay, the the colored parts are written in a first person perspective from Oppenheimer, which is something you don't really do with screenplays. Yeah. Um, and so I think if you read the screenplay like that and then watch the movie, like with that context, then I think maybe that would make more sense. But for somebody who has not read the screenplay, cause I'm just a guy and yeah. then, you know, there's cat yeah. drama outside. What, what I saw was that, the black and white is from Straw's perspective, and mm -hmm. um, he has like this black and white objective kind of perception of the world. Yeah. Um, Except that being just a little petty bastard. Yeah. Because uh, Einstein didn't say hi to him, and then Oppenheimer like roasted him. Yeah, it's it just like, very Oppenheimer seems like kind of a fun hang, you know. I get, I get why. I mean, he, at certain points, at other points, he's not that fun. He's not that. He's fun, also yeah, like a he, bit of a. He's, he's a kind bit of a jerk. Of a little bitch. He's a bit of a little bitch when he like shakes that guy's hand. You're like, what are you doing? Uh, do uh, uh, Betty Softy's character. Sure. Yeah. At the, at the end, the the like vaguely foreign guy who was building the hydrogen bomb and was like kind of a yeah, kind of a dick that also like didn't do anything the whole movie. A lot of the scientists were weird. Yeah, I think that's true to life. Yeah, I mean, um, right, but like it just in the movie, I'm like, I get that you had to be there because like you were there, but like, did we need Josh Peck? You know? Yeah. What? Did, um, who was who Josh Peck supposed to be? It's just Josh Peck, brother. Um, yeah. Where was Drake? They should have gotten Drake. Drake yeah. Bell should have been um, the act, the Senate aide. You know, so there would have been that kind of. You know, yeah, because you can't Drake have Bell Josh without been Drake. Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> no, Drake Bell should have been uh, Huey from the Boys and just playing the bongos, but he could have been playing the guitar, and that would have made yeah. more sense. For sure. Um, but my point to finally get to it: the black and white. It's supposed to have this artistic meaning of something. Is it some objective or truthful or Straw's perspective or whatever? That's not coming across to me in my brain. When I see that, I go, Oh, that's black and white again. And I'm just like, technically in the studio, they made this black and white. And yeah. I'm not, I'm not thinking of what that artistically means, which is why I looked it up. I'm just like, Oh, there's. Uh, well, that might be that. a you problem. Like clearly I'm like, Oh, well he's up to something when he's doing this. So like, what could that, mean? I know that he's up. To, I don't think <laughs> that they're just like, what if we made this black and white for no reason? I know that they're doing something, <laughs> but what it, the intent is there, but what actually comes across to me is I'm like, Oh, you've, you've now made it black and white. Oh, now it's color. Cool. So, so you're just having thoughts about what's happening in front of you. Like I don't like it's, it's taking me out of the story to it's not accomplishing what it sets out to in my opinion. So I think, I think what this, what like the way I, I, I'm kind of seeing it, if we can tie it back to our, our previous episode on the prestige, right. Where sure. that movie is also shot wildly out of order as far as like the, you know, yeah. the, the, the scenes are, you know, shown to us out of order. I don't know how they shot the film. Who cares? Um, but there's clearly like a past and present sort of like storylines that are kind of like switching back and forth kind of 
And I think that's kind of the same thing that he's doing with this, but he just coded them yeah. to be black and white for part of it. And then occasionally he also doesn't follow that rule and sometimes they're in color. Yeah. So, but I wonder if you were to like edit the movie and he just took all the color scenes and he jammed all those together and then all the black and white scenes and jammed those together, if that would even be remotely coherent. They're probably not. Uh, I'm gonna say no. Um, I think I think it could. I think if you did all the color ones, and you you might have to like kind of shift things around a little bit, but I think you could. I think you can make it work. I'm I'm not going to try, but that's fine. Um, Yeah, yeah, I've black and white and color switching back and forth has worked in films. I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying it's a bad technique, mm. but I didn't get what the message was, which is why I had to look it up. And it just takes me out of the film when I'm just like, okay, it's black and white. Okay, it's color. Like, I'm yeah, again, I, technical. I, 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 I don't. I I'm don't. noticing technique before uh, artistic intent. <laughs> I don't think it was done well. I mean, you could say that, but I just I don't understand. You're like, I'm I mean, noticing that, that the color grade of the movie is changing. That's, I mean, of like, course you're noticing it, like, because you're seeing it and then you're, it's in your brain. Like, I don't. <laughs> but that's what's standing out to me. Not like, oh, this is an objective part of the movie. Well, yeah, but I mean, I think you have, you're probably not going to figure out exactly what's going on your first go of it as far as like why it's changing like that but you can clearly go For being okay a three hour film i should be able to figure out what's going on on the first no i mean watch. like well i mean yeah the, the shot you know what i'm saying um <laughs> you're you're, you're i get it i get um, it <laughs> it I'm sounds like here. you're like I, i'm confused by the concept of colors changing it's what it's i'm it not confused like by it i'm just saying when you when you have this artistic intent to show a specific perspective that's not coming across. Well, I mean, uh, I, again, I agree the, the subjective objective thing. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but I was, for me, was able to go, Oh, the black and white stuff is more about straws than like it's, it's straws. I mean, content like, yeah, I, I gathered that. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I got that. I got to there pretty quickly. I didn't go. What's what's all this black and white I stuff? I didn't say going no. On? What's I this all know, about? What's, I, yeah, I'm just saying <laughs> that I. You had to look it up. So I mean, you know. Well, I chose to look it up because I care about research and high quality product. At the end of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't look at what Chris Ann said about it, but you know, I, I saw what other people were saying. Um. This movie had just, only a hundred million dollar budget. That's crazy. Sorry. Yeah. Imagine what we it. could do with a hundred million dollars. It's just dudes talking. Like eighty percent of this budget is goddamn Iron Man. Yeah, I'm sure that making the, the a miniature version of the atomic bomb going off was probably that's true. It was a practical effect, though. I'll get, Which I'll is cool. And some credit. He yeah, likes his practical respect. effects, and, and they're kind of sick. Yeah, respect for setting off a small nuclear bomb that, for a film. That's sick. <laughs> I mean, like, he's a cool guy, I think. I think I think Chris N kind of rules. Yeah. Um, speaking of Chris N, we, uh, can, we can discuss his, um, for whatever reason, he's doing like a press tour right now, I guess for the Oscars. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, and I think Besides part of that. it also might be like because all the strikes and stuff that were going on when the movie came mm, out, right? That might have no had limited his his ability to do things. I don't know, but yeah, he is he is talking. Yeah, good for him, dude. He's dispelling his entire character that the people have thrust upon him. Yeah, that you thrust upon him specifically. I I did call him. Uh, you're. Uh, what did I call him? A frat boy filmmaker. I mean, I think that a is still boy, true. Auteur. He's just. I think he's still. That's not a bad description, though. No, like that's a cool guy. <laughs> I, st- I stand by it. Um, no, but you 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 were complaining about him being pretentious, uh, and he is. I don't think he's. 
I think he's a chill guy. He's, I think he's, he's a little narcissistic and he's a little holier than thou. Um, and that's not Are you sure you're meaning. talking about Chris Ed and not somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> some of Chris Ann's fans perhaps um, <laughs> who's to well, say it, it's not just me deciding who this guy is in my head and being mm-hmm. mad at him I'm watching his work as you can see we're we're breaking it down right now I'm discussing we, genuine we, concerns we, <laughs> we did it last week and I've also seen interviews where um, our good friend Iron Man, Robbie DJ. Um, that's his name, right? Robbie DJ? Yeah, Robbie DJ. He it should he, be his name. So. He will talk about Chris N and explain the way that he is as a person. And uh, it backs up all the things that I've been saying. And then yeah. Chris N comes out and he's like, actually, Vin Diesel's the best actor of all time. I'm like, okay. What are you, an actor now? You just lie? Who wrote this fucking script? You and your brother? Vin Diesel. Put him into your goddamn movie then. I love Fast and the Furious. Okay. How come yeah, Paul he's, Walker's He's just dead? a chill guy. <laughs> Imagine Chris N. directing a Fast and Furious movie, though. I think yeah, that would indeed. honestly... That would be super cool. <laughs> It, and there would be I mean, no car. Would, no one would, would drive. Just be a fucking, they're like, Guys oh, talking. we're in space now. And then he's like, we're not in space anymore. We're doing time travel. Because he fucking loves playing with time in his movies, dude. Watch any Chris Ann movie. <laughs> he, does, like, he does love there's time. There's like 15 seconds of a clock face in that. Any fucking Chris Ann movie just shows you a goddamn clock. And you're like, whoa, what does this say about society? So, so what was the <laughs> clock in Oppenheimer? Just the the countdown to the bomb going off. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of clock. clock I feel like there's, I feel like there's not clock in this movie. Um, he, look, he just loves Oppenheimer to... was hanging clock. You know what I'm saying? Sure. <laughs> I'll allow it. And how, and how um, funny is it where he says, the, the, when he says I've become death, the destroyer of destroyer of worlds. Yeah. He's yeah. he's mid mid bang yeah. of uh, of Florence. That's crazy. That's I laughed out loud in the theater so hard. It was so funny. Yeah, I was like, is he? Did he like? Is Chris N like being silly right now? Like, is he doing a bit? Because I can't really justify this any other way other than like, oh, he's having a, he's having a bit of a laugh because he knows that that line has to be in the movie. But he's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something a little silly. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to know how silly he is. I think he's a silly guy. I think he. I feel I think like he's... he's operating on a different level than everybody else. So him being silly, like maybe all of his pretentious airs that he has is just being a little silly. You know, it's like well, <laughs> as a bit. <laughs> I just put time travel in every one of my movies. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's that's a little silly. He's got to know. He's like, I've done time travel again, but what if I do a movie where it like plays forwards and backwards? At the, like, I think Tenet was just like, and I, 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 I'm not even saying this ironically. Uh, I think Tenet is a movie where he is kind of just doing a subversive bit for the whole movie. Because that's the only way the movie, I think, is like redeemable, is that he's on purpose doing, he's being silly. And we'll find out one day when we do Tenet. Oh, Not anytime soon. I don't want to watch Tenet. Yeah. Um, I don't know. That's, uh, that's most of my thoughts on this film. Is uh, I don't like it. I found it very annoying. And uh, I don't know. It, it feels like he's pushing me to be sympathetic for people that I don't care about. That's what movies are. What are you talking about? <laughs> but I'm supposed to care about the people. Make me care okay. about these characters. I mean, he I didn't. I, it feels like he didn't try. It's like this is a movie about the guy who, like, I'm sorry, this movie. Realistically, 
realistically, if, this if, is if Oppenheimer a, was a little trash robot guy who just made yeah. little silly sounds, you'd be like, "Oh, this is a great movie." Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you want to hate on Wally? That's fine. Wally is a movie. <laughs> I'm not with, hating on Wally. I'm hating on you. Want to hate on Wally? You want to say it's the worst movie of all time? That's fine. That's your opinion. I'm not saying that. Look, Wally. <laughs> At the in the production design of Wally, uh, first of all, number one, they're like, we got to make the robot cute. Second, they're like, he's got to have a sidekick. What's the hardest thing to make cute and adorable? A little cockroach. It's his best friend. You know what? I love that cockroach. Okay, <laughs> that cockroach gets it, dude. And so you're saying like real, John Lasseter should have like redesigned Oppenheimer or given him a. Uh, a, a little animal companion is that <laughs> i'm just saying are those are your movie, notes i don't that movie has heart it has a beautiful story and for a kid's movie the first like 38 minutes there's no dialogue that's crazy it's an artistic masterpiece to be able to pull that off and still be appealing to kids that's like that takes a genuine amount of skill i don't know who this movie is appealing to other than people who want to cheer on the guy who built the bomb and then feel sad for the guy after the bomb goes off. Like, I just, I don't get who it's appealing to. It's just dudes talking about their fucking You're just ego. describing movies I like, and you're like, I don't get who would possibly yeah, like this. I know. <laughs> it's just a bunch of guys with big egos being like, you know, Albert Einstein didn't say what's up to me. Just talk to him tomorrow, dude. He didn't even look. He probably didn't know you were there. He's busy. He's got a lot on his mind. I don't know if you know this. He's Albert goddamn Einstein. Yeah, sure, he did the theory of relativity 40 years ago, but like he's still Albert. He's got a lot of thoughts going on, brother. Yeah, but he wasn't yeah. sticking his tongue out, you know, and doing that silly face. You know, yeah, exactly. Was, if he was sticking his tongue out and doing a silly face, and I was like, That's hey, how what's you know up, thinking. What's up LB? And he ignored me. I'd be like, Yo, dude, you're having fun right now, and you're not going to say <laughs> hi. But if he's like, you know, he's lost in his own thoughts. He's just feeding ducks at the pond. Obviously, he's in his own head to an insane degree. Just fucking relax, dude. Just text him tomorrow. You seem like the kind of person who's like, uh, this person made like a, an emotional decision in a movie that isn't perfectly logical, and now you're like upset that they're like, it doesn't make any sense why they would do that. No, I get it. I get it. I, I make poor decisions all the time. I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this podcast, horrible decision. But I'm just saying, if all your characters constantly make bad decisions and then I'm supposed to feel bad for them, that's not going to happen. You have no redeeming qualities. That's that's what that's what Euphoria is all about. And people love that show. All they do is make bad decisions about BPD pussy. Also. I've never seen it. In, in a lot of ways, there's a lot of parallels between Oppenheimer and Euphoria. Um, okay, next week we'll do season one of Euphoria. No, I mean, I, no. well, I don't, I don't have time to rewatch it, but uh, no, no we, we could do season one of Euphoria later. Yeah, um, you, I don't think you would like it. I think you'd be like, no. these people are terrible. <laughs> yeah, Except for Hunter it. Schaefer, who is like, she's fine. I watched a show recently, um, and I was like, I almost don't want to finish it because all the characters are making stupid decisions. And what's the show? What's There's the Sharp one? Objects on HBO. Oh, yeah, the thing that Ryan Seacrest told me about years ago. Ryan Seacrest told you about it? Yeah. Your close personal friend, Ryan S.? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ryan S. told me all about it. Uh <laughs> yeah, I mean, like... It's a decent show. I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. Um, you know, the characters, I was like, what are you doing? What do you mean you're taking Oxycontin with your 13-year-old sister? Don't do that. You're an adult. Oh, yeah. You would hate Euphoria, then. If, that's, if this is your, like, thought process, you'd be like, what are these kids doing? They're making terrible choices. I mean, when you're 13, do Oxycontin. I don't care. That's your life. But if you're 30... And your 13-year-old sister is like, you want to do Oxycontin with me? No. You say no. You say, thank you very much. I'm going to go to bed. Have a good night. You know? You you handle your own business. I'll handle <laughs> mine. 
never the twain shall meet. You know, <laughs> never the twain. Never the twain shall meet. That's a phrase. Uh, I don't know. Look it up. It's in a Christopher N movie. Uh, anyway, Ludwig Goranson killed it. Love your work. Um, if you're listening, come on the show. Talk about um, producing Camp, the, the Childish Gambino album. I'd love to talk to you about Camp. Um, I don't know. That's it. I've gone on. Did you think? Did you think the acting was good? The acting was good. I think. uh, Any any Oscar nods? Any? Any? You know. Um. Yeah, sure. Move Killian some flowers. I think that towards the end, um, when Straws was really uh, melting down, getting in trouble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it got a little overdone at that point. Not just he, he was um, a little upset. Yeah, I kind of in the theater. I was like, "Wow, this is good." And then when I watched it this morning on my laptop. Um, I was like, "No, this is a little silly." Yeah, <laughs> he's, like he's everybody being kind of a baby. Low. <laughs> yeah, everyone was uh, a little bit over over invested at that point. I think. Um, yeah, but you know, the first two hours of the film, sure. I don't know and if I was like Mr. Robot came in at the end, you know. Yeah, he didn't need to be Save there. The day, you know, love to love to the Egyptian peoples, but Rami <laughs> Malek did not need to be in this film. I I thought he was great. I love Egypt and its people. I mean, like we just watched like two and a half hours of this story, and then he's just like, "By the way, you remember what happened? Remember?" Fucking, they built a the little, little shit, like an anime recap. Of, that's first of all, that's not how that happened. But even if it was, I mean, it is funny to do an anime recap in the like last hour of your own movie. Yeah, because it <laughs> it's like I know you idiots aren't paying attention, so let's just let's go. Yeah. yeah, unnecessary, in my opinion. He didn't need to be there at all. Um, Robbie DJ was a little bit out of control mm-hmm. um i would have cut probably i would say you could easily cut 45 minutes from this film uh yeah i would just cut kind of like the middle part yeah because it's like there what's tension is there if they're gonna build the bomb they built it Unless he goes into some weird like alternative history, like it's like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but then like he doesn't build the bomb, and then like and then, somebody else builds the bomb, puts his name someone, on until it until someone builds a bigger bomb. Hmm? Hmm? So true. Until someone builds a bigger podcast, not gonna happen. Until someone builds a batter boy in cinema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's going on the Twitter. Look, do not build a batter boy cinema in my lifetime. If I'm dead, sure. I don't care what I don't care what Rick Real is up to. Shadow <laughs> Rick Real can do whatever he wants. But if I'm dead, you can you can make a batter boy cinema. Until then, cool it. Trying out a new catchphrase. What do you think? <laughs> cool it. That's a catchphrase. <laughs> yeah. Until then, uh, cool it. Is that how you're going to end the episode? You're just going to tell tell the audience to cool it, or are you just telling me to cool no, it? I'm, I mean, I'm chilling, man. Yeah, the audience. I, don't know what you're um, about. I think it should be hyped up, dude. Get mm-hmm. hyped up. Get hyped up when we're about to end the episode in like a minute. Yeah, maintain your hype until next week. Um, what are what are yeah. what are we reviewing next week? Because I don't know. I don't know. You want to do um, salt? Not particularly. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you have a suggestion for what we should review next week, email us at badboycinemafanmail at gmail.com. Yeah. Um... Uh, we will figure it out. I'll put it in the description once we figure out what we're uh, recording next week. So, so you, you guys can watch it ahead home. of time. 
you, you can watch a, a not a long, but yeah. form your own thoughts, and then be dismayed as we disagree. Yeah, whatever your opinion is on, and then in post production we're going to edit in what we're saying right now. Right? So the name of the movie, you know, mm-hmm. you're wrong, and we're right, even if both of us don't agree with each other. Yeah. We can both be right, even if we have opposing views. But you can't be. I think Oppenheimer was really bad. Rick Real thinks it was really good. And we're both correct. But whatever opinion you have on the film, you're not a professional. Yeah. (laughs) See, now we're cooking. Now now we got to re-record this bad boy now that we know what we're talking about. All right. Until next time, cool it. (laughs) Yes. <laughs>